Hello everyone and welcome to the Midas Civil presentation. My name is Adam Kane and I will be taking you through proceedings today. just want to spend the first minute just making sure that we've uh, everybody can hear me and see my screen so if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand or placing a comment in the GoToWebinar dialog box it would be very much appreciated. And I'll start in about 30 seconds time. Thank you. So we've got quite a good turnout. Everybody's uh, putting their hands up and putting their comments in. So hello and thank you very much. As I mentioned, my name is Adam Kane. I'm one of the technical support engineers, and I will be taking you through this Mida Civil presentation for bridges and civil infrastructure design software. And uh, we'll just be taking you through proceedings. If you do have any technical difficulties, then please call the number on screen or email into the email address just underneath. So just some of the general housekeeping, so I'm sure that most of you are uh, aware of how this works, but I know you can hear me now and you can see my screen, but if you can't and you can read this then, or it is set on low, then please change it in the bottom uh, right hand corner where you have the actual the speaker. And if you'd like to maximise the screen, then you can just click on the box overlaying each other in the top right hand corner. If your screen saver happens to kick in or your screen goes blank, then you will need to set your screen saver to off or just constantly wiggle the mouse. So just using quickly using the GoTo di webinar dialog box, you'll have to, if you wish to minimise it, just click on the red arrow. This will minimise the screen. If you'd like to ask any questions throughout, we will have a technical support engineer on standby to answer all your questions so we don't waste any time. Um, just post your question in the dialog box and that will be personal and come directly to us. So just to take you through briefly an introduction to Midas, we are a world leading engineering software solution developer and distributor. We've got the number one market share in terms of civil engineering software solutions. We've got over 450 engineers and professionals working for the company. We distribute in over 120 countries and have 30 distributors to those 120 countries internationally. We have 10,000 clients and we've sold over 30,000 licenses. Just to briefly go over the different software packages that we do provide, so we do provide the complete software solution. So not only the buildings and structures in engineering, and we also do the bridges, the geotechnics and the mechanical. Uh, today we'll be going through Midas Civil, which is our integrated solution system for bridges and civil structures. So just to give you a quick overview of the learning curve just before we start, um, we do provide free training and that is both in the validation period and before. So if you just wish to come in for a couple of hours you can and we'll train you up and you can just carry on with your validation of the license. We work with you on live projects and that's all completely free of charge just to get you used to the software. Um, our webinars are all 100% free. Uh, we also upload that content to YouTube. Uh, they are 100% interactive, so you can give your questions in at any time, like I explained at the start. And we can customise them for your, your needs. And with Midas Civil, as we go throughout the year, then we do want people to step forward and say any topics they wish to learn. So just to briefly go through Midas Civil and just give you a brief introduction. So... We do all the conventional bridges, skewed slabbed, frame and culverts, and they all, we've got loads of built-in wizards as well. We do curved steel girder bridges, composite, integral bridges, and we also do the, the precast girder bridges as well. Uh, segmental post-tensioning, so the balanced cantilever method, the incremental launching method, movable scaffolding method as well, and full staging method, they're all built into the software to make it quick and easy to do and select. Do the cable stay bridges and extra dose bridges, suspension bridges, earth anchored and self anchored, and we do a full range going all the way from the very simplistic all the way up to the full design, so full analysis and design within the software. So just a few snapshots, so Rusky Island Bridge, uh, so we've worked on some of the biggest structures in the world. We do have all these in-house on our computers so we can look at them. Uh, just a fly over there or a, a pre precast segmental post-tension bridge, uh, 
viaduct there and just taking you straight into Midas Civil. So I'm just giving you an overview, an introduction, go into the modelling analysis and then design and then just the project allocation at the end and it should all take about half an hour. So here we have the graphic user interface and what I'm going to do is bring the working space over from my second screen and show it for you in detail. So here we have the graphic user interface for Midas Civil. As you can see we've got all the different views on the other side which is exactly the same as AutoCAD. We've got our ribbon technology along the top so starting off at structures, going through to to nodes and elements, then properties, boundary conditions, loads, analysis, results. Basically laid out in a chronological order all the way through from first principles and all the way through to design. Uh, we have the same, you can access anything from the works window, so just with a simple right click you can access all of your tools that you have on the ribbon technology and it's all dependent on how you wish to work. So there's all the different views again. So you click on top and it just makes it quick and easy to work, move your way around the working space. So here we have the works tree and this is where all your information is built up chronologically as you're doing it. So just to show you elements and materials and as you can see you can just double click on that and select them. You can also isolate different uh, sections of the structure just based on the selection from the works tree which is very quick and easy and as you can see the visualization is absolutely excellent. So just to flick all that back on now. So we can look at all the time dependent material effects as well, so compressive same creep and shrinkage. We can also look at the sections and we can even change those sections down in properties. So if we did change that section then it would change in the model space. So just briefly going on to the reinforcement and to show you the reinforcement of the deck. You can see the typical main girder reinforcement, so that is the main girder with the slab over the top and the crack section. I can show you in the bottom corner. And just briefly going on to the boundary conditions. So these are the, the power spring supports that we've created. Just to undisplay those. And just show you some of the static loads, so just some of the beam loads and you can display anything visually within the working space and you can also put multitudes of different layers on as well. So just go through the vehicles and the moving load. So we can just look at the vehicle, we can change it. So if we want to change it to a different load, and we've obviously got load model three there, but we've got all the different load models, load model one, two and three. And we've also got the rail traffic loads for EN91, the Euro code. And just to take you through briefly the construction stages that can be created within the program. So there's the steel only, and then going on to concrete poured on top, so we add the deck, and then the parapet is being added, and also the surfacing. And the long term is just where we've taken, say, three to four years, maybe 10,000 days, whatever you want to put in there, and see the time-dependent effects of the material and the compressive strength we can also take into account. And at the bottom there, we see the message window and the command lines. So we can type in, uh, just C, just to create an element, create a node. And we also got the unit conversion down at the side, so we can change them at any time during the working, during our working or our program, or as we're running the model, just to make it nice and easy when we're inputting different information. Here we have different tables, so we can just check all the nodes, and you can copy and paste them into other programs. Also, we can manipulate them. So if you did want to bring in your nodes from, say, Excel and you've got them all in there, and you like working in that spec, then you can bring them into the program as well by copy and paste. We can import different different model files, including AutoCAD, and we can also do Lucas files now as well, making it nice and easy for that transaction. So just going back to the presentation, and just take you through. So various little views here. So we've got the wireframe. Removing the hidden lines, we can put it in perspective as well to give you a good visualiza visualization if you want to take any any shots of the screen. We can also do shrink as well, so we can check connections. We can check the transparency view, so we can look at through at the superstructure underneath. During our display mode, we can actually select anything within the working window. That means that if you want to put multitude of layers 
on then you can you can take your screenshots so if you want to look at the vehicles and also your boundary conditions at the same time you can we've got pre-tensioned and post-tensioned concrete box section built into the program we've also got tapered sections built in so any tapered section can be manipulated uh, composite sections and that's not only concrete on concrete but also concrete on steel we've got the section property calculator so if you do have an irregular shape or something that's not actually in the database you can create it in the section property calculator and import it straight into the program we've also got the same with AutoCAD so we can bring the section properties in from AutoCAD give it a material property and then take that straight into the program we can import tendon profiles both in 2D and 3D we can do the creep and shrinkage effect to Eurocode and we can also do the compressive strength as well for when you're doing the construction stage analysis we've got the drag and drop function from the working window so as you can see I've selected the actual the sections that I want to change and I've just dragged and dropped them straight from the works tree we're working with Banagher and we've got all their sections built into the program but we do do all types of precast concrete sections and they're all supported within Midas Civil just showing you there at the bottom how we can import them as well uh, we've got automatic consideration of the composite action between the deck slab and the girders taking into account the, the reinforcement, the longitudinal and transfer stiffeners and also the shear connectors we can easily generate the horizontally curved girder bridges just by simply selecting the three nodes and also the element that we want to put in place so this is a composite section with a steel girder and a concrete deck so we just select the three points we've already split up into different sections say in 40 in total and as you can see that is quick and easy to generate and there you go here I've created a skewed bridge losing the element to rotate and extrude function you see we're just going to rotate that element by five degrees and if we're just going to create the mesh going along the top of the structure so just making the actual the rotation point now that uh, reference line has been created we can select all and just extrude it all the way across so that is going to be a line to planet element type and then just extruding that across the whole surface of the deck then for our main girders as that is just the deck and the cross beams we're just going to create an element and just create the four points going across so strictly by hand selecting one end to the other creating the deep girders you see that was quickly generated and just to finish it off the supports there so we do the highway live load analysis as per BD 37 and BD 21 for all you budding bridge engineers out there we all enjoy the codes uh, highway live load analysis as per euro code so we have the different load models through one to four and we even do the pedestrian loads and the straddling lane loads to the UK national annex for special vehicles uh, we do the auto consideration for the PSI factors in low combination and we do the combination of existing traffic with special assessment vehicles um, it's not a black box you can do your user defined vehicles as well so if it's not in the actual annex or it's in the drop down menus you can just create your own we do the moving load analysis for precast U-beam bridges and we also have the LM71 vehicle position for maximum sagging moment of mid-span we can do the filler beam deck live load assessment we can do the, also do the design uh, we can handle all types of screw jacks it doesn't matter about the actual the degree of uh, skewedness if it's worse so if it could be 30 degrees if you so be it uh, we've got quick extraction of forces from the composite section and we can also look at the steel optimization of the the steel going through the concrete deck so filly beam deck design as you can see there's your report on the right hand side uh, we can do the deck design with the reinforcement and also the transverse reinforcement as well we can do the U-frame assessment for steel railway bridges with the buckling mode shapes 
pedestrian vibration forces for jogging, walking and crowd loading. As you see here is a video from somebody walking from one end of the bridge to the other and the natural frequency which is being created. If you wish to find out more about this subject then we do have YouTube videos. Here you also have a walking load over a bridge with a suspension bridge. So we can do the effective solid stresses due to live load on masonry structures taking in the isotropic material types. We can do the sodding modelling of masonry arch bridges, consideration of the soil structure interaction at supports, and we can also do the backfill pressures along with the hydrostatic pressures. We can do the output for yield locations in bricks, i.e. the cracking and the vulnerability from cracking at the surfaces, and we can also indicate where they are. In this section we're going to take you through the wizards and uh, just to give you a brief snapshot of the wizards here so we do have a multitude of built-in wizards in the program making it quick and easy for you to do. Here for example is the beam wizard, the truss wizard there where you can just change the truss to be any type you want. Construction stage analysis for cable stay bridges and these are all wizards so that means you just fill in the dialog boxes and you get to go through one process all the way from start to finish. We can do the incremental launching method with the nose tip deflection. The balance counterlever method and we can also look at the tendon profiles in the deck as well. We can do the reinforced concrete slab wizards where we can do the actual the, def the different steps, so longitudinal configuration, the transverse configuration, we can also do the load definition to Euro code and the lane definition as well. Similar for the reinforced concrete box culvert, exactly the same steps in place, longitudinal condition configuration, transverse and also the load definition. We can even do the rail track analysis model wizard, so take into effect the temperature loads, the model with the train loads and the gravity direction so as the, the train is going around a bend then it will take into account the actual direction of the train's acceleration. We can do the, the braking and also the acceleration forces on the structure, on the structure and we can even look at the we will that all equates to the construction stage of the model with all the load cases. One of the key things is we do the automatic generation of the multilinear type elastic links. So you simply select them and then it will automatically create them. We can divide, define the moving load in three steps. So it's just a quick and easy process. It really is literally step one, select the moving load code, be it Euro code, whatever code you're working in. Step two, define the traffic line lane or the traffic surface lane and step three define the standard vehicle load so in our FE software we generally create line models in Midas Civil as you see there but we can take it to our high-end FEA package for solid modeling with the imported tendons as well for detailed analysis We've got the general section designer in the program so you can check all your factors of safety and you can put any regular section in and do all the reinforcement. We have a dynamic report generator. What this equates to is a, a Word document will open up within your working window. As you can see here at the bottom, this is the actual report. This is actually open within Midas Civil. Uh, you have your reports tree which is just this here so we have all your tables, your images, your graphical representations, your bending moment diagrams, your shear force diagram, you name it you can put it in there and all your table, well I mentioned tables actually and all you simply do is just drag and drop that across into your Word document, this is open in Midas Civil from there if you risk to carry, any, carry out any changes to your actual your modeling space you simply go into the model, carry out changes um, reanalyze it, whatever you have to do and then when you come back in regenerate the report, all your images have changed, your tables, your graphical representations, your reinforcement, it all changed within that report making it nice and easy for you to build up reports quick, fast, effectively. 
So, just some of the different analysis capabilities we have in the program. Now, I'm going to take you through a few of these in a bit more detail, but detail. But I'll go round and just explain them. Uh, so, we have the construction stage analysis. Uh, we can carry out the moving load analysis with the LM1, 2, and 3, like we were explaining. Uh, we can do the modal analysis with the eigenvalue and the Ritz factor. So, for your vibration analysis, everything like that. Dynamic analysis for static seismic events, the response spectrum, time history for your walking loads, we can do the buckling analysis, uh, large displacement analysis of cable supported structures, P delta analysis for your columns and everything like that, so thermal stress analysis for well large volumes of concrete, uh, non-linear analysis so we can do it for the non-linear geometric analysis, non-linear material analysis, push over anything uh, non-linear base Heat of hydration analysis for your, again, your large blobs of, blobs of concrete that you're doing for your mass foundations and the effects with and without cooling pipes and also the integral bridge analysis as well, which I'll take you through in more detail. So the pre-stressed concrete bridge and the tendon pre-stressed losses, we can do all those throughout the construction stages. Again, this is the stress output and the locations of the pre-stressed concrete, as you can see from the image in the bottom left-hand corner we can actually select the position around the different parts of the structure. We can do the cable stay bridges and finding the unknown load factors by optimization for the cables. We can do the influence line analysis for moving vehicle loads. Oops, sorry, I've gone past it there. Uh, we've got a moving load tracer and a vehicle load conversion to static load that means you can see the little red dot there you want to find the worst case for that element and what we with that red dot then it will find the worst case for the vehicles or the worst vehicle case where they're situated for that element here you see the eigenvalue analysis being carried out in a suspension bridge we can do the the temperature controls for the heat of hydration uh, with and without cooling pipes so as you can see the stress is going throughout the material and that takes into account the the vulnerability from cracking at the surface for the integral bridges we can do the soil profile so if you do have your SI and your modulus of subgrade reaction results then you can feed those into the program and it will automatically generate your pile spring supports or surface spring supports depending on what you're working on so here you see the pile spring supports we can do the thermal expansion for the integral bridge we can also look at the bending moment diagrams for the substructure and also the superstructure along the top there so we can design everything within one working space we can do cutting planes through any solid object as you can see here as you can see a multitude of different cutting planes and bending moment diagrams uh, solid stress we can do cutting planes through much like I said a minute ago but we can also do the cutting planes where you can check the stresses We can look at the, the different stresses and deformed shapes plus the contour annotations as well as you can see from the imagery on the right hand side. We also have uh, design features so when you come to the end of your analysis you can carry out all your design to the Eurocode standard. So pre-stressed concrete design to Eurocode 2. We also have the composite plate girder design and moving on to the reinforced concrete design as well to Eurocode and the structural steel design to Eurocode 3. So pre-stressed concrete box girder design as per Eurocode and the British National Annex and we can also look at the ultimate limit states and the serviceability limit states for to the code. Uh, here are some of your outputs and they all come in Excel format so these are all your design documents that have been created following your working so we do the composite plate girder design to Eurocode as well and just some of the partial factors there in the box here are some more of your composite plate girder design and as we showed you or I showed you in the actual the works tree 
the, the output of that and the reinforcement and you can also look at all of the shear connectors, details and your tensile strength and everything like that. So now I'm going to focus on the composite plate girder design and take back into the program the model we were looking at earlier on. So I've just dragged that across now. So I just want to show you some of the load combinations and we can generate these automatically. So to go into auto generate, select the Euro code and just click on OK and then it automatically generate all the different load combinations. Well, we can delete those if we want and uh, you can change them. Obviously there are a lot of different load combinations. You can look at the different load combination sheet as well. So you can get a print out of those and check them. Okay. Now just look at the deformation, the displacement contours. So we can look at the different stages as well. So just go back to the first stage and just look at the just to the summation. As you see, a nice deformed shape with lots of colours from the rainbow there. We just uh, flick through and we can look through the concrete poured. Um, obviously this is greatly exaggerated a deformed shape so we can actually change the deformation. So we've got complete control over it. So we can just put in a scale factor of 0.2. There you go, that's a bit more realistic to actually what's going to happen in practice. We can also pull the legend up as well. As you see there, it gives us uh, the 6mm, but we can change it so we can actually visualise it a bit easier. So it's actually 55mm of deflection. At the, the worst point in the red point, sorry. So, just to go through to the last stage, see there we're still receiving 21 millimeters of deflection, but it's always nice to actually visualize it, look at it. So just go on to design and just look at the composite design. And just we can look at all the different design parameters and change them if we so wish. You can also just go down to the shear connectors and also longitudinal stiffers and change them. And just go down to design and the bearing resistance. change that back to meters so we can visualize it and just look at the different um, parameters and the uh, the classes as well so just a so anything here will f earmarked in red will fail but this is all your elements for the composite section or the composite deck just take through the actual printed results which are all in Excel format I'll just pull that up from the bottom drag it across my second window so you see these are the results and uh, design conditions bending resistance going down through in the top and bottom flange and the resistance to the vertical shear as well and we can also look at the resistance to the lateral torsional buckling resistance to the longitudinal shear and also the resistance to fatigue. So it's all highlighted there. Stress limitations. Going all the way down to service B limitation checks. So we can look at the reinforced concrete design of the, the piles. Just want to switch to the, the side view so I can highlight just the piles. So you select them. If you go from right to left, it will select everything that it touches, if you go from left to right it will select only what's in the window. Uh, we can do the concrete code check there, just to So I just selected beam there, so I'm just going to go back and just select column. Yeah, that's better. And we come up with some results. Alright, so you see we've got the actual results come out. And you see the pile, we can look at the the inter PM interactive curve and we can manipulate that and flick it round. You can also look at the graphic, which is a one page summary of the results for the pile. I'm also giving you the reinforcement in there and a diagram and the cover. 
Then we can look at all the individual members. If it's highlighted in red, it is failing. If it's highlighted in blue, then it is a passing member. We can look at the detailed report for each individual one. And we can even save this information in the diagram report at the end. Okay, that was just a brief overview of the reinforcement and everything. So just to get that back out of the way. And I'll take you back into the presentation. So we can do the reinforced concrete design. Let's put the Euro code. And we can also do the steel section check and design as per the Euro code as well. So just to take you through a bit of project application. Uh, so just a few, like there's a cable stay bridge. So give you an illustration, another cable stay bridge. We're, we, we've we been using the software all over the world with some of the leading consultants on the biggest structures. You see there was a little focus on FEA there. There's a, a pre-stressed segmental post-tension curved bridge. Uh, steel truss bridge there. Uh, but you, as you can see, it just we could there's the balance cantilever method. Oh, sorry, that's the movable scaffolding method there. As you see, we've worked on all sorts of different structures across the world and uh, a variety of different countries. So, for all the way from the Americas through Europe and all the way through to Asia. So there's a extra dose bridge there, and I'll just take you through these very quickly. We worked on, as I said, biggest bridges in the world, fifth longest cable stay bridge, third longest cable stay bridge, and soon to be the number one uh, longest cable stay bridge in the world, which I've cut the slide off, I'm afraid. But that was Midas Civil. Um, thank you all for attending. Uh, please go on the Midas YouTube page and you'll be able to find or the Midas UK YouTube page we've got all of our connecting channels to that as well but all the information's uploaded to there and if you want any learning from university level all the way to advanced engineering then you can learn it all on that page so please by all means attend that and you'll be able to pick up more my name has been Adam Kane my number was at the start but we will be sending out emails to say thank you for attending and uh, I look forward to seeing you very soon in the next webinar presentation so but thank you we do have a lot of learning material and everything that we're going to be demonstrating this year so i look forward to that and uh speak to you soon